What's going on my YouTube peeps? Fernando with Pro Windows, aka the Nandalorian. Congratulations on your brand new system. This video is going to help you with the setup. First time buyers that are not familiar with the RODI systems. This kit consists of four RO filters. I'm sorry, two RO filters, 40 inch housings, one carbon and one DI. This is a single user. I could also modify this to be a double user for you using only one DI. Keep in mind that you will be uh, shortening the lifespan of the DI, which will last about two months max. Uh, after that, you can replace it. And I have other how-to videos on how to do that replacement uh, easy as one, two, three. Anyways, uh, this video today is going to be specifically on the mounting process and installation procedures in case that uh, we are not able to communicate uh, due to different time zones and us being busy. Uh, I want to make a little quick instructional video for you guys for the immediate setup. So first off, this is going to come on a crate. It's about 48 by 52 box. And the system itself is going to come mounted on this pallet. There's going to be some small drill holes on here. Once you remove these two screws, one or two on top, and then two on the bottom there, one and two. You're going to remove these and you're going to pre-drill a 3 8 of an inch hole on this. This is the, going to be your mounting support wherever you decide to mount it. If you decide that you do not want to use the strut channels, you can remove the bolts that are, that are attached to the channels and you can actually use the plate to mount it on a different place. Uh, keep in mind, you're probably going to have to move some things around just to get to the bolts, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to mount it uh, just as it comes. So your filters are going to come installed already. Your two RO filters are going to be inside. Your carbon is going to be inside. Your DI is going to be inside. So we're going to start with the basics on the setup. I'm going to go ahead and position my camera uh, somewhere over here where you guys can kind of see where we're at. And I want to explain uh, piece by piece. So first off, we are going to start with your water line. Once you've got in your system and you've once you've gotten your system and you have installed it in the desired location that you want on your van or your vehicle, the first step is going to be mounting your water inlet valve. Uh, keep in mind, uh, I, I did not install clamps on this, so you're going to have to clamp this elbow down. This is going to be this is a quick whip line for your water connection. So if you run a hose to a spigot and you run it to your house you can easily tap into it with this 3 8 female valve that's sitting on here. Uh, so make sure you put a clamp over here and you put a clamp on this side too. The reason I'm not tightening them down is because if you decide to shorten this for any reason, you can easily remove it, cut it down to your, the size that you need, and then put your clamp on uh, on this side. Just make sure you clamp it down. Uh, same thing with the, with the elbow. I have not tightened them down completely because I don't know exactly where you guys are going to position this. So all you can do is just easily remove this. And it comes with a mounting bracket. So you can mount this wherever you want. Keep in mind that this, mount, this mounting bracket can be removed and put in any position that you desire and your flow in, flow out. So this will help you if you have to stop the water source from getting into the system. You don't have to run all the way back to the spigot to shut off the water. You can automatically just shut it off right here. Currently, it's on the open position. When you fli uh, flip it over, uh, it's going to automatically shut the water system off into your system so you won't be pushing any water through it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you guys add Teflon, both sides. Everything else is clamped down. Make sure you put Teflon on there. Good amount of Teflon so you have no leaks. Um, and same thing with the opposite side, your elbow depending on what position you guys want it at. Whatever position you guys leave it on, just make sure it's not in the way so when you open up your valve, it doesn't, the hose does not interfere. All right, so that's step number one. Actually, step number two, because step number one is mounting the system to your wall inside your van or to the wall of a vehicle, to your ladder rack system, to your trailer, wherever you guys do. You'll probably have to do some small modifications to fit your needs, but everything is uh, built to modify however you guys want it. All the hoses are already pre-plumbed. Your RO inlet, you got two hoses coming in here. You got your carbon inlet, and then you have your uh, DI inlet. The, le the, the hoses on the left side are gonna be your outlets. Um, first things first, we're gonna, your RO fresh water out, 
everything is pre-labeled for you guys. I got a little small tape that you can remove once you have it installed. So this is gonna go to your RO holding tank. There's a little label on here that I put. So like I said, same thing with this one. This stuff is not sealed yet. On your RO holding tank, this is gonna be the fresh water that you're producing, RO into the tank. You do not have to put any Teflon tape on this because this is just delivering water to your tank. You are gonna to wanna to put Teflon tape on the other one, but I'll explain that process. So you're gonna cut yourself a, it looks like about, maybe about an inch. You're gonna pre-drill a one inch hole into your holding tank and you're gonna place this bulkhead through your tank. You're gonna, you're gonna tighten it down from the bottom. You're gonna reach inside your tank, sit it down, bring it in, tighten it back down. Um, I recommend that when you do that, you pre-install this one first. Put your, uh, tighten it down all the way. Whoops, there goes the gasket. Just keep an eye on it, make sure where it goes. And then you put it in through your tank. Uh, make sure you measure this diameter here. I haven't measured it for you guys, but you're gonna wanna cut this to so it can go in smoothly through the top of your tank. Do not side mount it, do not, under, uh, do not cut a hole underneath your bulkhead. It's preferred on top. Then you're gonna grab your, your, your plastic washer and your lock nut. You're gonna go inside the tank, bring it back in, and this will tighten up counterclockwise. And once it's nice and tight, this feature has been completed, which is your RO water coming out of your system into a holding tank. Second, we're gonna have your, where are we? Here we go. The second bulkhead that you're gonna install to your tank, um, it's going to be the same size, a half inch with a one inch hole, possibly a one inch hole on, on your holding tank. And this is going to be the pickup for RO water to from the pump. It's going to pick up water through this uh, thing. You're going to have to install, I like to use sprinkler risers. I'll buy me like a 36 or a 46 inch sprinkler riser from Home Depot or Lowe's or any uh, plumbing uh, facilities that you have in your area you're going to want to pick up a half inch. Uh, I prefer to use a, a strong, like a Schedule 80, uh, if you can find it. Um, and you're going to install it on there. You want to make sure that you put enough Teflon because you want a tight seal. You, do not, you don't want this sucking up any air or anything. So you're going to cut that, that riser to barely, maybe about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of that tank. That way you're using up every single drop of water that goes into that tank. So you're gonna install, you're gonna pre-install that after you have cut your, your hole on your system. Uh, I'm sorry, on your holding tank. You put the system, you, you put the bulkhead through the tank. Uh, you, you tighten it down counterclockwise. Uh, just make sure you don't cross thread this. Once it's, once it's installed, Let's see here. Yeah, I almost crossed right it there. All right, so seal it up, and then you're gonna grab that sprinkler riser. You're gonna measure, and you're gonna tighten in that thing up. Make sure you also put some Teflon tape on there. Seal it up, and now this is gonna be the pickup tube for your RO water. It's gonna suck up water out of the tank. It's gonna draw it through the pump, up the pump, into your DI. Now, coming out of your DI, uh, I'm gonna, I already preset your water delivery. So I know most of you guys will like to run water to, through your reel, through the manifold on your reel. I do not recommend that you do that because water will create rust inside of that manifold. And when you start up your system, you're gonna be pushing uh, rust through your water fed pole line and you don't, you don't wanna be doing that. So you're gonna eliminate the, the manifold. Uh, I'll probably do another video. Actually, there's a video, on, another video on my YouTube explaining that, uh, how I bypass them and I made a separate quick connection. And the best method that I have used is using the 3 8 quick connects that you use on your pressure washing hoses. Only thing is that you're gonna be using some stainless steel barbs with the right thread to hook up to your, to your item here, your quick connect. So now, because this is the connection point to whatever hose length you're gonna to wanna to use on, on, your hose, on your hose end, you're gonna to wanna to use a male quick connect that's gonna plug into this. Once you plug into this, 
you're going to stretch that hose out and at the end of that you're going to have your your whatever connection you use to hook up your water fed pole hose and that's it uh, if at the end of the day you disconnect this i recommend that you use one of those little three three eighths mel quick connects and plug it uh, go ahead and plug it up so this is not leaking water while you're driving around after your your day has ended okay so that is that next one is going to be your ro wastewater it's also connected to uh you got two your ro that goes into your tank and then this one that's connected to the other two ports on the back sides of your ro's you're going to have your wastewater this is pretty much going to be a standalone hose this one you can route it to wherever you want and position it in a position where you're going to be able to dump this water out so keep in mind when you are producing water and even if this valve is closed there's a small pinhole in there that will allow the excess wastewater to push through and let the R, the RO clean water go into your tank. At the end of the day, every morning before you start up your system, you're going to want to open up this valve. You're going to want to flush it for about two minutes to get some fresh water in there before you start pushing water into your tank. You don't want to contaminate your tank. So once you flush it every single morning, make sure you guys practice that every single day. That's going to maintain the, the, the life of your carbon, the life of your RO's, and it's going to keep your DI's uh, life a little bit longer. Now, once you're done flushing in the morning, you can go ahead and automatically close this valve. Then the water is going to start going through the system and it's going to reroute into your tank. All right. So this can be positioned wherever you guys wish, um, anywhere in your truck. You can even add a different piece into it and, and run it somewhere else and just let it drain out. That's that. Uh, next thing. Let's talk about. Uh, so the, the connections. Once, once everything is done and is ready, you're going to want to uh, remove these little two caps on your bus bars. So you got two little plastic caps that will hold that in place. And you, I'm, I'm including two about five feet of electrical cable, power cable, and you got your negative cable. So you can go ahead and plug this one, grab the correct one. You're gonna remove the screw to your bus bar here. Actually, I'm going to zoom you guys in so you guys can see that. Uh, bear with me here. Let's get, oop, let's get you guys down into the, well, here. I'm going to move you guys over this way. Go ahead and position you guys there. Okay. So that's exactly where I want to be right there. So those two bus bars right here. So you're going to remove... You're going to remove one, whatever side you wish to position your cables in is up to you guys. Uh, I would do power on this side and then your negative on this side. And you can run the cables through the back side. Make sure there's some little holes in here that you can use to put a zip tight. Make sure you give it a little bit of slack so it's not rubbing against metal. And then later down the road creating a little uh, hole in there. You don't want this thing sparking against your plates. All right. So remove the screw. Uh, make sure you use the correct side. You have a quarter inch and then you have a three eighths. The quarter inch obviously is going to go right over here. You're going to tighten that down and then you're going to take the opposite end and you're going to hook it up to your battery. Same thing. Repeat the same process for your negative cable. Okay. Once you're done, go ahead and reposition that back on there. Grab your two plastic screws and secure that down. Hand tight and you should be okay. When, once you have power set up to this and everything's ready, once, let's uh, move you guys back over and then bear with me. Please excuse the, all the movement and then I got going on here, but I'm currently working out of my living area. So once we have everything plugged in, like I said, there's no complication to this this is as easy as one two three everything is pre-plumbed for you guys all the electrical wire is ready um, like i said i haven't completely tightened down everything there's some zip ties here that you can you can uh, tighten up yourself and make everything look nice and tidy if you wish to add something to hide the wires it's completely up to you guys just make sure you do not have any wires touching i guess any hot parts uh, make sure uh, everything's nice and clean and that's it. You got 40 amp breakers. You, this is going to be your production pump switch. Um, 
and that's it. So once your bulkheads are on, once you got your water line, your tap water line hooked up and seated, uh, you have your bell valve installed, before we start up the system, we are going to remove, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna reach over and move you guys. We're gonna, you got your, your first, second, third filter here. That is your carbon. Before we start pushing water through your system, we are going to want to remove the hose that is coming out the rear of the carbon. For those of you guys that do not know, you're going to want to purchase this little tool release kit key from John Guest. This is going to allow you to pop, properly remove these uh, push fits. It's a lot easier. You just slip it in there. Once it's in there, pull that out. All right, it's out. Push that over to the side where you don't lose it. And then you're gonna grab the blue temporary hose that I'm gonna send. You're gonna remove the tape. You're gonna plug one end to the end of your carbon and you're gonna push the other side and you're gonna let the water drain out. You're gonna open up your water line and on one of the on, the, on the end that's facing outside of your vehicle, your van, your trailer, you're gonna be flushing out the carbon first. The water's gonna come out completely black because you're, you're cleaning out the carbon, right? So once you see that clear water's coming out, maybe like after a nice two, three minute flush, the water is going to be nice and clear now. You can go ahead and shut off the water at your valve. Then we can go back, remove this hose, put that to the side, save it because when you do your next carbon replacement, about six to a year, six months to one year, um, you're going to do the same flush all over again. So keep that handy, keep it somewhere. And then we go back and we can reinstall the hose that you originally removed. And that's it. That's all that's to it. You can go ahead and open up your water valve and you are going to have water production into your tank. Now keep in mind, uh, you do want to saturate the, the, uh, the ROs at least 24 hours. So the water might look a little yellowish um, on the first day. Go ahead and fill up your tank. Uh, let, that, let, let the water filter inside of your, let, let it saturate inside of your RO filters. You can completely drain out your tank and then start fresh again and start filling it up again. All right. You guys have any questions, comments, or concerns? I'm here for you guys. Make sure you guys reach out. 24-7 support. Uh, we'll schedule a time for consultation if you need it. If you guys want uh, more information on the pricing and shipping quotes for you guys, let me know. But this system, also, if you guys want to build it yourself, this kit is available at jracingsteen.com. You can probably purchase it for around $2,500, uh, but you're going to have to build it yourself. You're going to have to uh, put your own hoses. It does come with PEX tubing. Your, the standard kit comes with PEX tubing to plumb everything together. It's up to you guys. I'm using uh, my own hoses and my own accessories, pump switches and all that. But like I said, here it is. It's available for you guys. Everything's ready just to install. Um, and that's it. Anyways. Windows up, comments, questions, let me know.